I really had to <laughs> write it down and go over it and over it. And then, and then go, where the hell am I going with this next part? I've, I've gone from here to here. What chord will bring me back into this part? Which was really cool for me because it made me step out of my comfort zone of, you know, or yeah. there's your five chords or whatever, four yeah. chords for a song. And there's your chorus, chorus and there's your verse. And I'm writing bridges and like middle eights into this thing. And and it was really cool. So I, I, I wrote the song and the song was called I Put It Away. And basically titled from I'd put it away. I, I, I'd put songwriting away. I'd put the piano down. Um, and I, I won't delve too much further into it because this will be part of the show on Saturday night. I don't want to ruin that. You're going to play this song? Yeah, I'm going to play oh, this yeah, song. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So, um, well, man, that's I, I um, like these podcasts, right? I'm up to number twenty-eight. Uh, I hated the first one, and I keep. I love to write, but I never write. And I read this thing recently, and the person said, "Look, I hate you know actual writers that write novels. I hate writing. I love finishing writing. That's what I get the buzz out of. When I finish, mm. then I spend the next month jumping around the you know." around town going, oh, man, I feel so good. And yeah. that's what you have to focus on. And I'll bet you that um, Brian from the Beach Boys had 60 songs he hated, you know what I mean? Oh, and and likely, even, yeah. the, even his famous ones are the ones where he goes, ah, it's just not there. It's not really finished. Well, his latest album, I, like I, I read somewhere, his latest album, he's basically come out and said, uh, this puts pay to, to all the demons of the past of all the Beach Boys stuff that he'd done. Wow. Which... He sort of feels is like, um, you know, not quite his... Not finished or, yeah, or just, other people's know, he input. Was, he was beyond all that sort of stuff and why did I have to do it sort of jazz. Yeah, but see, no one, I think the real artist will never be happy, you know. Yeah, but see, the funny thing was with, with I Put It Away too, like here I am thinking lyrically it, it didn't do much for me and I'm saying to David over, over Steve, this song really lyrically is like not fantastic you know uh but musically i'm really sort of happy with it and it was in a key that was really sort of really sort of out of my uh, comfort zone again and he comes back to me he says you're an e flat am i (laughs) oh yeah 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 you know I, i i know what my sort of range is uh i had my range sort of examined or tested a few years back wow. um but for him to actually say oh you're an e-flat and that's really cool and you hit this note and it's like wow like you know and he's and then he says this song is like uh radio friendly oh, cool. and i'm going mm, excellent excellent i'm really gl- like i'm stoked yeah that he's thinking that but at the same time i'm thinking but what about the other that one that one that one was really cool and this one was really cool and and there's certain stuff like it, there's such a variety on this album of what there is. And prior to it um, going into the studio, I had been really focused on country music, like current country artists, because I'm finding that that's where rock and roll went to. It sort of went country. Mm. Rock went two ways. It went to country and it went to pop yep. virtually that's after true. the whole grunge thing, um, you know, where anybody could play three chords and have a hit and all you had to do was wear a checkered flannel shirt and away you went, you know. Um, But, yeah, it was more a case of um, I wanted to find that rock side of music again. It doesn't have to be heavy rock, but as long as it's got a heartbeat and and it's got Mm. some great guitars in there and stuff like that. And um, Ross Comerford, he's also on this album. So he's playing keys on this album, and he's done some absolutely wicked stuff. So we, we went to Eight Mile Plains State School. Yep. Okay. And I remember um, having – my parents had just – to this day, have no care about music really at all, you know. But I remember Ross Comerford came to school in – I think it was year three or something like that. We are only about seven years old. And for some reason uh, – no – they, someone, someone came along and played a guitar to us. You know, we we're just kids, and someone came along and did this little guitar thing. Mm. And then uh, I remember just exactly like this. I've told Ross this. Uh, 
somehow Ross got to play the piano in this little hall room there at Eight Mile Plain yeah. State School. And I remember him playing going, wow. And, and someone said, what's that? And he said, it's um, chariots finger exercises. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, maybe it was chariots of fire. Because somebody I was talking to recently said, I, I, But sorry. then he did this other yeah. thing. And I remember him saying finger exercises. And that never left me. It just like, I yeah. didn't know that there was whole, this whole world was existed. Yeah. Kids yeah. are playing instruments and he's doing exercises for his fingers. That's so nuts to me. Yeah. Changed my life right there. <laughs> I mean, I had a three-quarter size nylon string guitar that I could barely put my fingers around. And like playing three notes was like, wow, you know, you can play guitar. And no, I can't. <laughs> but but to then see somebody like Ross playing stuff, and you go, wow, that's cool. Wow, so he's on your record. Isn't that a cool thing? Well, that's what I he's really He's just wanted. some kid from primary school. Yeah. Yeah, you but know. that's but that's that's the great bond that we didn't know we had back then. We have that now. Mm. We have it later in life where we can sort of. Well, I know for myself, I appreciate my school friends a whole lot more than what I did back then. Mm. You know, and yeah. we walk the same ground, man. Mm. Yeah, that's 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 the greatest thing. We've walked the same ground. We've walked the same streets. We all went down to Big Gun or we all, all went to the Arndale shops or, you know, wherever. We did all that. So to, to have you on the EP, Ross on the album, all that sort of stuff, and friends, I, I really sort of collate friends into something that I'm doing because it, it means a lot, you know? So. Yeah, and it's moments caught in time, like serious, serious, a moment caught in time with that, with that guy from school. You well, know? that's right. Yeah, you know, I'm always talking to AJ over here. My daughter and she's um she's currently doing really well on the bass guitar. Really well. And and freakishly stuff. Like she's playing things like Higher Ground. Um, wow. Which was you know, like Stevie Wonder. But so you play with your fingers then? Oh yeah, she's slapping. Oh that's good. She's slapping, man. Wow. Because I tell you why sorry to cut you off, but I'll tell you why we've been auditioning bass players all week for this cover band and it's a you know, the, all the guys in the band have been in cover bands forever, so we just play anything, like the, try and make it like the record. And mm. every time we see a guy come in who's only using his pick, we all go, oh. Yeah. You can do it, sure, you can make the sound, but you just can't get the same feel. Oh, if you're she's, constantly she's playing slapping with pick. and popping everywhere. She's showing me her calluses, and I'm like, but she, she plays stuff like, we're lucky we've got, her bedroom is the music room at home, so it's got Matt's, like, Tama acoustic drum set. Uh, it's got the bass rig, it's got my guitar amps, it's got half of my PA in there, leads spread everywhere, and a bed, and a TV <laughs> and DVD player, and she just lives there. Wow. And uh, so it's really cool because she's getting into it, and she's doing this at school as well. She's really into the music at school. Whereas, you know, as much as I love music, I wasn't cool like you at school. I wasn't cool. No, I was never cool like you. No, <laughs> don't I sh- wasn't don't cool. shake your head. <laughs> I used to remember walking past the music room at school and seeing you and Grant and Chris all in there and rocking out to ACDC, and I'm going, "Yeah, not as good as Billy Joel, man." <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, but uh, hey, I could never you know. play guitar, mate. All I could play was Chris Cleave taught me um, rhythm. That's yeah. what I pride myself on now is that the actual no, internal rhythm, like. Now I'm really confident to sing and to play drums and play bass because I'm not thinking about the instrument because mm. I know that internally I've been I've done so much work on rhythm that that you know that's a really cool thing when you tap into that especially as a singer when you're yeah. copying some other people's songs or whatever and you can just like a machine gun but but that that and try and make it like a record and you're like wow that feels yeah. so good yeah now that's a funny thing because I say to AJ I say like you know keep going keep going get into the music room. So she does. She spends, you know, lunch times in the music room at school, and she does her stuff. And she comes yeah, home, cool. she practices, goes to her lessons after school, and practices, That's and then, then starts playing, you know, higher ground on and doing the Red Hot Chili Peppers cover of it. And it's yeah. like, wow, like, yeah. I know what to end this podcast on later. Is that bass guitar sitting right over That's there? That's right. She's gonna she's gonna be wanting to show you. But that's, you know, but the funny thing is, like, you know, I never did much with music at school. I think I even failed year nine music at school. I mean. Yeah, I didn't even do it. Myself I and uh, Richard chatted and we used to get in there and play Peter Gunn while everybody else was trying to play Hot Cross Buns. Like, you know, come on, this is boring. Like, let's play some rock and roll. Mm. But um, we, um, 
we sort of did that and I never really exposed myself to it at that earlier age for probably rejection and failure and all that sort of stuff. But then um, later on, like, you start doing more and then you start getting into it. My first band, man, they wouldn't let me sing. They said, you can't sing. We're not letting you sing. Then I got a monotone line. One step forward, two steps backward, you know, at a live gig. And then all of a sudden from there, um, it was, okay, well, maybe you can sing this song. Try this. Oh, I'd go away. And I would learn that song. And I would hit note for note for note. And I would just nail it. And I would do everything. And then that built into another song. I think by the end of that band, I was up to about five songs. Yeah. But, yeah, we sort of shared the load a bit. But we had a female lead singer, so it was a bit of variance. Um, but then when I moved down the coast, I had to sort of develop more. It was kind of like, well, I'm in, a, in an area where there's not many people um, to play music with, so you need to step up to the plate. And then all of a sudden, I'm singing 40 songs. I and couldn't do that. Yeah, but that, Alone that was in the a, challenge. In a, with a guitar. Yeah. I actually can't. I've, I've never done more than eight songs. Yeah. And I definitely have done, I've done, I remember doing two songs on a, an acoustic guitar in front of people like, Drew can sing. <laughs> yeah. And I, I didn't even know, man, struggle city. I did a course last week and they said, uh, oh, so what did you do before now? And I'm like, oh, you're all you know, musician. And they're like, oh, cool. We'll get you up here with a guitar and you can sing a song. I'm like, no. Well, <laughs> no. That's a bit confronting. But, you know, go but to you a do gig, it all it's the time. fine. That's right. Yeah, wow. Go to a gig, it's fine. Smoke and mirrors. Yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? oh, and I found that with some of, some amazing um, people, like Ross Wilson. Man, like, you know, I've told a few people this story. I met Ross Wilson a few times. And um, you see the man on stage, and he's, like, larger than life. He's out there, man. He's really putting on the show off the stage. Oh, how you going? I'm Ross. Right, yeah. Yeah. It's inverted. Nice, nice it's to meet you. Right? But you know what? You talk to him about the AFL and St Kilda <laughs> and man, he comes to life. You know, I saw this one. <laughs> it's, it's such a ridiculous sport though, isn't it? That AFL, isn't it? No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny you say St Kilda today. <laughs> I've been getting into running on the beach and this morning they're having, at Chugan, they're having the, um, the surf carnival. So there's all the, the big, for the big boats, right? Mm-hmm. So yep. all the surf clubs, are there. I nearly got run over by the North Cottesloe um, boat this morning. I'm thinking, Cottesloe, <laughs> that's where the sharks are. That's Perth. Yeah. Right? And then I see, as I'm getting back up to the thing, these guys are pushing the St Kilda surf club boat across the sand. I'm going, oh, mate, <laughs> you're going to struggle. <laughs> you're going to struggle with this surf. I've been to St Kilda. It's just like, there's it's no surf. Flat. It's just flat. That's it. Yeah. What the hell? And I was looking at it and I started to yeah. overanalyze their body shape, you know, compared to the Queensland guys who just have to battle seas all That's day. It, oh. And I'm like, yeah, you guys look like AFL players. Look at you. We get all, the, cy- <laughs> we get all the cyclones to practice in and stuff oh. like that. And the, 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 the I forgot I used, surf. Yeah. Yeah. I forgot I used to hassle you about AFL. <laughs> What's happening in AFL? So St Kilda's your favourite team? No, God, no. You know? No, that's Ross's favourite team. Mine's the Bombers. What? Ross Comerford? No, Ross Wilson. Oh, sorry. Ah, ah yours Ross are the Bombers. Wilson. Ross Essendon, Wilson right? down in, who lives in Melbourne in uh, uh, Elstonwick or whatever it is down right. there. Um, yeah, St Kilda. So that's his team. How come you fell in? What did you like AFL? Ah, oh, that was a family trait from, yeah? from back in the um, 60s. I suppose, uh, 60s and 70s, my, my father, my uncles, they all played for Maine in Brisbane. Oh. And, oh, you know, so many people go, Maine. How, how do you get into football? You know, like, you know, yeah. uh, th- it does exist in other states than Victoria. Well, it does, but, you know, we went to the same high school, so it was just AFL. I oh, know it was only, AFL only just got into Rochdale High School. Yeah, and yeah, the I was lucky left, to get right? into it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wasn't it? Oh, yeah, a couple of, yeah. yeah oh, no, got, I was always there. But, I think I had two years of it there, but, you know, it was. But it yeah, was new territory. Was, yeah, but it was kind of like, you know, 13-year-olds up to 17-year-olds playing. And when you're 13, That's man, right. and there's some 17-year-olds in there that are big, and you're like, do we really have to play in the same team, sir? <laughs> like, yeah. But, um, no, it was, but it was cool. Same with a couple of other guys. How did you, how did you even find it? So did you, what's Maine? Maine, the suburb. Maine? Yeah, you know, like Abbotsford Road at Maine. Oh. Yeah. 
uh, what's oh, that? Yeah. Um, what's that soccer field where the Lions play? The Raw. 